Hi everyone, welcome to the uh, third AMHA video blog. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for coming out for Development Weekend. Uh, I know it was a great turnout and that's, uh, that's fantastic. Um, I wish I could have been there. A, 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 pr a previous commitment uh, I was unable to get there, but I'm glad everything that I planned was able to go uh, as planned. Um, I spoke to Laura Swim, the, the, the woman that did the presentations on the nutrition and the stretching. Um, she was very pleased with the turnout with the coaches, and she said that uh, she, you know, she uh, she was able to see lots of coaches. Uh, hopefully, take a few things away from that. Um, also, with the small area blog, I'm I'm glad some coaches uh, were able to take some things from that as well. I spoke to a few, and they really had uh, opened their eyes about that uh, the, the video that started it with the the adults playing the small area game. So I, I'm glad that went as planned. Um, I know the on ice session with Dave went well. I'm, I'm sure uh, I talked to a few, and they said they were able to take some things away from that as well. And uh, the hot stove before the game, speaking with Brad and Dave and some other coaches that were there, uh, also really enjoyed that and was able to uh, take them th take some things back to their team, respectively. So, and also I'm glad that uh, everyone was treated to a great game by the X Men on Saturday night. A good shootout victory, uh, two to one. So that was nice to see. One thing I wanted to discuss today that I'm really excited about is uh, this is the month that we're going to roll out our ex-hockey mentorship program. Uh, we were hoping to roll it out maybe late October. Uh, there were still some scheduling things that needed to be done and some teams that had to be finalized. So I, I wanted to hold off until November until everything was finalized and set set pretty well in stone. So um, anyway, we'll be rolling out this month. Uh, we've assigned players to teams, and the way it works is that basically every team, every rep, every uh, sorry, every rep team and uh, the novice teams, both male and female, have uh, have. One, at least one if not two and some some even have three um, X-men or X-women mentors uh, the female teams obviously have some X-women that are going to help out and uh, most of the, the male teams uh, have all male X-men players and what that is is uh, at least once a month uh, one of the mentors will be coming out to practice um, it, it, they, they might not be able to notify you beforehand they might just show up they have your practice schedule uh, they've been assigned to your team and um, They'll basically be able to come out, push pucks for you, have some fun with the kids, encourage the kids, get to know them a little bit. And the purpose of this program is for uh, is, is to get our players out in the community to help help with the kids that uh, that come to our game so much and support us. So it'd be great to put a face and a personality a little bit to the name and the number of the back of the jersey. So um, what I'll be doing is I'll be contacting each of you and each team individually, and I'll uh, and I'll copy the the mentors on that email. That way you'll have that contact, and the players are encouraged to stay in contact with you guys and you're encouraged to contact the players for any ideas as well as contact me I mean you can always contact me as well um, but uh, you're encouraged to contact the players and uh, and uh, and get to know them a little bit as well and uh, I'm excited because uh, at least once a month they'll be out hopefully more if they can uh, depending on their schedules with class and practicing and games different things if they're on the road but uh, at least once a month they'll be out to help um, and like I said you can use them any way you want. Uh, they won't be coming to prepare in terms of planning a practice, but if you have something in your plan that you want to maybe give to them or, or if you have a defenseman out or, uh, or a forward out that uh, you think maybe you can give them a few minutes with the forwards and work on something, they're more than willing to and, and happy to do that. So uh, that will be starting to come out this month. Um, I know some players are planning to go on this week with practices, uh, some ex-women and ex-women, ex-men both. So. Uh, we're really excited about that. I think that the players will really enjoy uh, being out with the kids, and hopefully the kids will enjoy having the X-Men and the X-Women on the ice. So, again, I'll be uh, sending emails out to each team individually to make sure that uh, they'll have a contact and uh, an idea who their mentors will be. Okay, it's, uh, it's been great to get on the ice with lots of teams so far. Um, one thing I really like is that uh, there's a really strong commitment to uh, the skill side. Um, you're, I'm, I'm always going out. I'm finding coaches working with goalies, and uh, and the turnout for goalie camp has been tremendous. So thanks for uh, keep on suggesting that to the, to your goalies. Um, there's been a good commitment to uh, the skating and also the puck handling at the start of practice as well. So uh, keep up the good work. Uh, I really think that if you commit to that and commit to the process. Um, the coaches are planned for every practice and well prepared, so I think that's great. So I think that's going to show uh, really strong and clear improvements o over the course of the season. And by that uh, benchmark, I think that hopefully you'll, you'll be able to find a little more success in games as well if the players are really improving. So there's one skill that uh, I want to talk about today, and that's the skill of angling. 
Um, I've worked on a few teams, worth a few teams with it so far, and um, and I, I think that uh, the understanding is, is going pretty well from the player's point of view. Um, but it's in today's game, the uh, especially at the minor hockey level, where, there, there, where there's no contact before Bantam, um, there, there's got to be a way to really uh, force the player to give up the puck or, or put them into, into areas that they don't want to be. And uh, in the game where there's no body checking, um, angling and positioning is very important. And this can be done at any level, right through from uh, from Adam um, all the way up, and even at levels where there's uh, where there's where there's body checking, such as Bantam and Midget. Um, there's going to be times where body a body check is uh, is not the right play, and we just want to angle them. Okay, um, so I've talked to a lot of the teams. Basically, uh, we break it down. And there's good ice and there's bad ice on the surface. And uh, if we can angle and dictate players into that bad ice, then we're doing a pretty good job. Okay, you'll see some information here on this slide. This is uh, directly from Hockey Nova Scotia, and that's actually from their checking clinic that we do with uh, with uh, Bantam kids and some midget kids that are playing first year body checking hockey. Um, Actually, the the big introduction and, uh, and and start to the checking clinic is a lot about positioning and angling, because um, you really have to put yourself in a best position and, and use proper angles to be put in a situation where you can actually use the body checking method. Okay, so angling can be considered the first line of defense for a player, and body stick and positions are important in checking without making contact. So th there's much more uh, uh, checking without actually making contact than uh, people may realize, okay? And, and the best kind of def definition of angling is right here. It's the ability to force your opponent to go in the direction that you want. This normally would be towards the boards or outside of the checker. Okay, so we, what we want to do is kind of take away the middle. And I'll get, to, I'll get into a little more of that uh, as we go on. But uh, here's some key points that uh, Hockey Nova Scotia stresses about the angling. Okay, players should remain between the puck carrier and the pass receiver gradually reducing the puck carrier speed okay and that pass receiver that could also be the net or could be an area that they want to get to basically if we can get between the puck carrier carrier and the area or the person that they want the puck to get to um, we're doing okay um, and we want to gradually reduce the puck carrier speed so if we can dictate their speed and location we're doing a good job players should skate parallel to the opponent or in an arc or circular movement not in a straight line. So um, again, we'll do, we'll get into that as we go. But uh, if we if we put players in, in a position that they run in straight lines, okay, that gives the puck carrier a few more outs that they can go in a different couple areas that they can beat. They can beat them. Um, if they we if we skate parallel or in an arc um, to the player, what we're doing is taking away the options and putting them in a spot they don't want to be. Players should skate slightly behind the opponent, uh, thus not allowing the opponent to cut back. If we can take away the option to cut back and then gradually uh, slow their speed so they can't get ahead of us, then that's exactly what we want to do. Okay, We need to control their skating so they can adjust their speed as their opponent's speed changes, uh, whether it's getting faster or slowing down. And a player's stick should always be in a position to steer the opponent and to intercept passes. So if we want the player to go um, one way, we want to be able to use our stick as an extension of our body and to, uh, and to push the player off into, into the bad ice, as we call it. And as well, if we can use our stick um, as a tool to maybe intercept passes or even just to deter the uh, puck area to make that pass, then that's, uh, that you're doing your job as, as, a, as proper angling. Okay, so I just I just have some drills actually that uh, that are really good for for any team to do for angling. These can be also used as warm ups as well. After you do some skating and some puck handling, uh, these are really good drills to do, and they also work on controlled skating as well. So there's a couple drills here. Um, I'll bring up this one to start. It's called the cardigan angling drill. Um, it, you're on all four dots, and it does turn into a shooting drill. But there are times when you, uh, when the player uh, angles well, that the player doesn't get a shot. But that's no problem. If you can keep the reps going quick enough, the goalie should be able to get some help or some reps. Excuse me. All it does is it goes in opposite sides on the whistle, so opposite opposite dots, and the player's passing. And right away, as soon as that X2 gets the puck, they're going to be cutting down the wall. Okay, so they're not going straight at them. What they want to do is attack the wall nice and wide. This player here, again, also has to adjust their route. If they go straight at this player, this player can also cut back, okay? So what we want to do is come in this side, have our stick to this side so we can make sure that they don't cut back, start to adjust their speed, angle, 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 and if we can actually get them and they're in this area right here, right before the blue line or even at the blue line, then we're doing a great job. Again, it's time and space, so if we take away this route, 
We don't want them let, take away the middle, force them outside, and then we can angle them. We want to take away their hands. So once we get close to the wall, we can actually take away their hands. Uh, what that means is basically stick on stick, so they can't uh, so they can't uh, handle the puck or pass to an opponent. Opponent, and that's legal and, and allowable in, in non uh, body checking hockey. And also, like I said, no straight lines. If we were to take a straight line route at this player right here, that player could take one step and then boom, gone right to the middle, and then we're beaten. Okay. Another drill is uh, German angling. This is a this is a great drill. It can, it's a full ice drill. Um, it's got you can do it uh, in four corners. I've just got it drawn out in two. You can do it four corners on, on the on the whistle. But what it is is this player's here is skating a couple strides, making a full ice pass. This player, as soon as that player gets the puck, he's trying his hardest to get down to this end to score. Okay, and he can go anywhere he wants to go. So this player's really got to adjust his route. Come down nice and low. I've, I've, I've drawn the stick there on this side to make sure that there's no cutbacks. And if they can angle all the way down and keep them outside the dots into that bad ice, as we call it, okay, that's what we want to do. If this player sees that this player maybe is taking a straight line at them, just like this, and they can feel that they can cut back, then by all means, okay, that uh, that's a good teaching point for the angler to not take a straight line. So we want to come down, let them get the puck, let them start heading up ice in this, in, in this. We start to match their speed, have the stick on this side of the body, use an extension as your body to make sure they can't cut back and, and follow them all the way down the ice and then slowly take them down, uh, take them down the ice on this side. And if they can skate themselves down into the corner, if, even if they enter the blue line, as long as they're outside the dots and in that bad ice, then we're doing our job. The drill here is the London angling. Similar to the German, uh, it's going one end at a time. Uh, this time there's a pass from the other side. So the first player would come all the way down, uh, cutting the red line. So what that means is they're coming on this side of center. They're going to get a pass. And this X2 has got to cut the blue line. So they've got to come above the blue line. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to skate forwards the whole time. So this person is going to get the puck and try to stay wide. So what we want to make sure is we're not running at a straight line. This X2 is not going straight at that player because what that does, it gives that player an out to cut back to the middle. So we're going to match their speed, stay here, keep them outside the dots, all the way down. Okay. And the last drill here that I wanted to show is this Team Canada uh, angling drill. So this could be a good little warm-up drill as well. Um, if you have coaches on either side of the center circle with pucks, players come from both uh, all four blues. And they can go from either side. Um, they come around the dot. The dots aren't showing this side. But if, what they do is they would come around the dots. Coach would put a puck to either person. Whoever gets that puck has to get down to the end uh, in the far end. So if they started here, they're trying to score in this net. What this person is trying to do is trying to adjust the route to angle them down the wall. Okay, so what it is, if they get the pass here and this person all of a sudden tries to run a straight line again they're giving them outs on either side we want to take away the routes and leave them one out and that is to go outside and we want to make sure that they adjust the route have the stick on this side so they don't cut back and then skate them right down in the corner just to further my point about uh, good ice and bad ice I just wanted to draw a little diagram here um, we I like to call the dots inside and outside different areas okay so we have we have the good ice inside the dots okay so this is the good ice right here I'm just gonna put that just so we have uh, something to reference to okay and then we've got the bad ice on the outside of the dots on either side okay so just so we have that an idea so when we're angling I've been talking to teams uh, throughout the last couple weeks in practice Offensively, if we want to attack and if we want to try to score a goal, we want to try as much as possible to keep that puck into the good ice. So when we attack and bring it to the net, we want it to be in this area. Okay. Defensively, if we can force the other team into the bad ice, then we should be doing okay and pretty successful. Okay. Um, if their shots are being taken out here, okay, we'll trust our goalies enough to save those. But once they get into that good ice area, that's when we're going to have some trouble. Okay. So if we can force players into that bad ice on the other team then I think we're going to be okay okay another a good reference that uh, I spoke to a few teams about it it's almost like um, uh, I've called it before uh, the good ice is almost like the is almost like the, the lake or the water okay the good ice is where you have fun on the boats 
or on the water skis or the jet skis. Okay, that's where you have all the fun. That's where you want to be. Okay, the good guys are in the water. The bad ace is on the beach. Okay, people on the beach are just going to watch you, and you know they don't have any fun because they get to watch everyone having fun on the water skis and the boats. So if you're sitting on the beach. Okay, that's where we want to put the puck. So I've, I've talked to a few teams already, tried to reference it as much as possible. If we can keep them on the beach or on the shore, let us have fun in the water because that's our beach and we don't want anyone else to have fun in the water. So this might be a good little way to have some fun with your team, reference it that the good ice is where we want to attack offensively and uh, and you know uh, be in the water and use the jet skis and use the boats and have some fun and then let the other team be on the shoreline and watch us have the fun so we can push them into that bad ice. Okay, I just wanted to draw out one drill. Um, I think this is a very, very effective angling drill that a lot of teams can use. Uh, we'll have one line on this side of center, let's call them X's, and then we'll have another line, we'll call them O's on, uh, on the other side of center. So these would be the first two players in line. Okay, we'll have the coach right in the middle here with some pucks. Okay, uh, you can put a cone on the dot or you can just use the dot as a reference, uh, whatever it may be. Okay, so the first player on either side is gonna go right around that dot and right around that cone whatever's there okay just like that okay so that's how it starts so the players are going around the cone and they don't know where the puck is going to go and this is going one at a time so it's nice and slow okay so let's say the coach passes to this player what that means this player is on the offense so they want to use the dots as much as possible to try to attack okay this player is immediately on the defense okay so again what we don't want to happen is if this player runs at a straight line this player can go this way or this player can go that way okay we want to take that out as a, as an option so what we want to do is make sure in order to force that player with the puck to go this way okay we want to make sure we adjust our route so we come and we push them just like that because what that does it takes away this out option here so we have our stick on this side Let me rotate the stick so I can show you how so the stick would be on this side of our body so make sure they can't go through and then what we're going to do is we're going to match their speed just like that and push them all the way. Okay, On a full ice drill like this, we want them to be pushed so far off to the side. We're going to give them the blue line. If we're going to, if we're going to let them get in the blue line, that's no problem. It's, it's, a lot, it's really hard to, to stop them in that big of an ice surface. But if they're going to cross the blue line, make sure they cross on this side here. Okay, So if that player is skating down, he or she is crossing in this area we've done our job perfectly we just got to make sure that we maintain that gap and we push them all the way down to this side of the ice and again if they're gonna shoot from here okay that's no problem our goalies will save that puck that's no problem at all so if we can skate them down to the corner that's great okay so that's basically how the drill works it's just a full ice angling drill so once again two players leave Coach can pass to either side, so goalies have to be ready at both ends. Whoever's on the attack is trying to get through the middle of the ice to score. And whoever's on the defensive is going to adjust their route, have a stick outside their body to take that cut back away, and push, push, push all the way to make sure that they cross the blue line outside of the, outside of the dots and in the bad ice. Let them stay in the shoreline. Let us take care of the beach, and we can have fun in the water while they sit in the sand and, uh, and watch us have all the fun. Okay, thanks for watching. That should that's uh, that wraps up our uh, video blog uh, for today. Um, again, I, I hope that everyone can use some angling techniques in their practice, and this can be used at any level. Um, I've seen novice practice, Adam practice. Every practice has some sort of uh, of drill where it's a competitive, almost like a one on one. Okay, sometimes aren't one one on ones aren't always uh, forward coming straight down the ice with the D going backwards. Okay, a good one on one drill would be a forward versus a forward on an angling drill. Another good drill would be a defense in the forward in the corner where the defense has to angle the forward up the wall or down the wall instead of going straight at them. So um, I think you can be creative and maybe come up with a couple things. What I'll do is add those drills that we just covered um, into the remote bank. So if, you, uh, if you're looking to maybe uh, try them out, uh, I'll make sure that they're in there if they're not, if they're not there already. Um, so yeah, just make sure we use some angling stuff uh, in our game. It, it's becoming very important in our game now. It's such an underrated skill, uh, especially, like I said, at the minor hockey level with no body checking. But even at the levels where there's body checking, there's going to be much more positioning and angling techniques to separate uh, the player from the puck more so than body checking. So um, yeah, once again, thanks so much for watching. Uh, we'll be in touch uh, about the mentorship program. We're really excited about it. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll
we'll get your, we get the uh, mentors and the players out soon. So we'll uh, we'll be able to uh, have the players meet you guys and meet the players and uh, and definitely have some fun with that. So any ideas at all, please let me know. That if you'd like to see something on these video blogs, I'm always looking for great ideas and uh, different things to share. So uh, once again, thanks a lot, and we'll hope to see you on the ice soon. Take care.